Asa is four months old now, which is crazy how quickly that's gone by already. And he's such a sweet little guy. Um, he's We call him Peanut. He's just a little peanut. And I think one of my favorite things he does lately is he smiles a lot and he started laughing recently, which has been really sweet. Um, he laughs at his big brothers, like when they're doing something weird or like when they're like yelling, he'll just go like and do this like laugh. It is so cute. And I just can't even believe that he's laughing already. I just, I'm already starting to see like a little glimmer of his personality. So it's just been really sweet um, having him. I just love it. I love his little personality. It's so cute. Um, very different than how the twins were as babies. I feel like even though they're very different, they were almost like had very serious expressions a lot people would always joke like oh they're mean muggin he is a smiley guy very smiley very sweet um loves people just like smiles at people a lot has this big like happy smile and he also has like a feisty side for sure like he can go from zero to 100 real quick if he does not like something so i would say sweet and feisty i love this question um okay so my oldest, Dominic, I, oh, actually, I would say he reminds me of my brother, Christian. He reminds me of Christian. Um, very, like, has, like, a very serious side, but also a very sweet side. And also has, like, this sort of methodical vibe to him. Like, he likes things a certain way, particular. Um, and then my son, Leo, I would say he reminds me of my sister, Danny, a lot. Um just like really energetic and physical and just like active and um, just, yeah. And they're also very sensitive, like a very sensitive soul. Um, and Asa is four months old. So I have no idea about Asa, but we'll see as he grows. You know, I said this before after I had the twins and I will say it again now that I have Asa too. Um, I think that no matter how many kids you have, what the genders are, whatever, like Every child that you get to have that is entrusted to your care, that is such a gift. It's such a blessing. I don't take that for granted. Um, if I had one child, that would be more than enough. Like, I just always think like, I'm not entitled to more children or, you know, a different gender. Um, so I'm really grateful to have my three boys and I love them so much. And I think in the future, I would love to have more kids, but I'm also very content where I am. So I don't really care. Like if I had, three more boys. I don't think I would really care. I mean, yeah, there is part of me that's like, oh, it'd be so cool to have a daughter. But I just know at this point that it's definitely God's design and plan for your family. And like, it's not my place to like decide that. So I'm just kind of up for whatever. This is an interesting question. Um, I, again, I think this is different for everyone. Um, but for me and Max, I will say looking back, it's kind of crazy. We had a crazy first year with the twins it was a blur total survival mode and I struggled a lot like really struggled um but after like a year I was like I feel like I could be open to another kid I don't know why I prayed about it I had peace like I do think that is the answer is really just prayer and that God moves your heart in that way um and I kind of feel the opposite right now. Like right now, I mean, I have a four month old, so I'm like, I am not <laughs> wanting to have another kid at the moment. Um, but it's like, yeah, it really is just trying to be prayerful and give it over to God and surrender and like let his plan unfold because it is perfect. It's maybe not what we expected, but it's perfect. So just trust God with it. And I will say another note on this is that from the moment that we were like open to it, um, I don't think... I think it was another eight or nine months that we even got pregnant. So it wasn't like we got pregnant right away. And then we ended up being due like in Holy Week, which is like my favorite week of the year. And Asa was born on Easter Sunday. And I just like, we could have, you know, theoretically we could have conceived any of those months, but it was like eight or nine months later. And I just didn't feel rushed about it. I was just kind of like, okay, if it happens, it happens. If not, I love these two boys and I'm grateful with where we are. Like, I just really felt so much peace about it. I think too, prayer and peace are the biggest thing and other things too, like you kind of just have to ask yourself, like, are we in a place that it would be like loving to bring another child into this family? Like mental health, finances, our home, like, are we in a good place? And I just think God will give you peace for the rest, if that makes sense. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. However, my experience has been, I'm a part-time working mom. So I've never worked full-time 
postpartum or in any since I became a mom. Um, I work part time. I actually don't really work that many hours per week in general. Um, so that's my experience. And I actually really like that balance of having something that I'm doing, a job that I'm going to feels like a nice balance. Um, but I also feel like I get to be with my boys a lot, which is a blessing and I'm really grateful. That being said, I know that that is not the case for everyone and I totally get that. Like a lot of people don't have the choice to like really control that. Um, so that being said, I my thought is that you are probably going to want to do whatever offers you the most flexibility and time with your kids. That's just what I've observed and seen with a lot of people. Um, and I will say one note on the work from home stuff, do not count on naps like, oh, I don't have to have any childcare. I will just work while they nap. I'm sure that works for some people who have a lot of flexibility, maybe not really any deadlines. Maybe they just kind of work for themselves and they can make their own deadlines. But if you have any type of deadline or structure or you're working for like a company, you like, in my opinion, you need to have some type of childcare. So, you know, you have a guaranteed amount of time where you know your kids are going to be taken care of and you can get some work done during the week. Like that is one of my biggest pieces of advice if you do go the work from home route. So just a general thought on the whole working mom, work from home, part time, full time, stay at home mom. I feel like this is constantly like something you hear about maybe like i don't want to say a debate but just like there's a lot of different opinions flying around my opinion is that the amount that you work does not make you a good mom or a bad mom um and i think you have to go with your gut and just trust that you'll find what's right for your family i personally think it's more about being intentional with the time you do have with your kids so putting your phone away looking them in the eye taking an interest in what they're doing and what they love, like being there for them, showing up for them emotionally. Anyway, I just wanna say like in general, my thought is that any time we get with our kids is such a privilege and a blessing. Not everyone is able to have that, which is completely understandable. And I think that it's more important to be present the time that you are with your kids. Quality over quantity, if that makes sense. Um, I just remember my mom always saying that she was like, you could be a stay-at-home mom and be super checked out and not really present. Or you could be a working mom who's really present when she's with her kids. And like, it's just, I don't think it's as cut and dry as people make it seem. Um, it's more about really just maximizing and um, being present and loving and, you know, just involved and interested in your kids' lives, the time that you're given. Um, I think that is what's really gonna make them feel the most loved. So. Just my thoughts, but you will find what works for you, I promise. Just takes a little trial and error.